Hey everybody, how's it going? So, today I'm gonna show you how to clean the cooling system and replace the thermal paste in your Dell XPS 9500 or 9510. It's a very simple process and all you need is a Philips NT5 Torx screwdrivers, rubbing alcohol, Q-tips and some high-quality thermal paste. I recommend using Arctic MX5 or Grizzly Cryonaut. I'll put the links to all the stuff down below in the description. Before we get started, I want to show you my CPU and GPU temperatures in idle and under heavy load, so we could compare the results before and after. So here's my CPU and GPU idle temps. And what I'll do next is I'll go to the tools menu and run system stability test. So after running this test for a few minutes, we got a max of 74 degrees on the CPU and the GPU peaked at 72 degrees. Which is actually not bad, but I have to mention that I always use my laptop in a cool mode. This mode slightly limits your laptop's performance, but keeps it cool. And if I switch to any of these modes, the temperature will go instantly above 100 degrees, after which the CPU will start to thermal throttle. So let's try to fix it. Ok, so let's go ahead and start by removing these 8 screws that hold the base cover to the casing. Now with those screws removed, you're going to need a spudger or any plastic opening tool to pry open the cover. Starting from the bottom left corner, carefully pry the base cover in the direction of the arrows. Don't pull or pry the cover at the side where the hinges are located, because it may damage the cover. Finally grab the left and the right sides of the cover and lift it up and out of the case. By the way, I also have a video on how to upgrade your Dell XPS 9500 or 9510 to its maximum. I'll put the link at the end of this video. Before you start working inside the computer, I'd suggest disconnecting the battery, especially if you're not confident in your skills. Next, we need to remove the fans. Disconnect the fan cable from the board, then remove these two screws and slide the fan out of the heatsink, like so. To remove the left fan, you need to disconnect the cable, then remove these two screws and this metal shield. Finally remove the screw and slide the fan out of the heatsink. Once that's done, we can start removing the heatsink. In the reverse order, as indicated on the heatsink, loosen the four captive screws and remove the heatsink from the board. So, let's start by inspecting the cooling system. This is the site of the heatsink where all dust and dirt begins to build up. You can use a paintbrush to brush out the dust, and then use a can of compressed air or blower to blow any remaining debris out of the heatsink. Now repeat the same process for the fans. Just give it a good blowout to make sure it's nice and clean. Also try to spin the fan by hand. It should spin easily and freely. If it doesn't, I'd recommend replacing the fan, the link down below. Also check if the thermal pads are not damaged or dried out, and if you need to replace them, then simply remove the old pads, clean the surface of the heatsink with rubbing alcohol, then cut out proper size pads and apply them onto the chips. I'll put the links to the pads down below. As you can see, this compound is already dry, and we need to replace it. So, first we need to remove the old thermal paste from the heatsink, CPU and GPU chips. Just get a cotton cloth or a wet wipe soaked in rubbing alcohol and wipe away the old compound. Then gently wipe off any remaining residue from the chips. You can also use a Q-tip to remove the remaining paste. Ok, so now I'm going to go ahead and apply the thermal paste. There's a whole bunch of theories about thermal paste application methods and which one provides the best cooling performance. The problem with some methods like the dot is that the thermal paste doesn't spread out evenly. So for this particular model, I recommend using the line or the spread methods. As you can see, the last method guarantees nice and even coverage of the CPU die surface. So apply the right amount of thermal paste to the chip and spread it evenly without any gaps. You can use a plastic card or an applicator that comes with the paste. Next, we need to repeat the same process for the GPU chip. Now, carefully attach the heatsink and in sequential order tighten the screws. Now let's put everything back together. Install the fans, connect them to the board and then replace the screws.
Connect the battery to the motherboard, put the cover back on and snap it into place by starting from the bottom right corner and then work your way around to the bottom left corner. Finally replace the 8 screws that secure the base enclosure to the top cover. After your computer is reassembled and powered on, you'll be alerted that the time of day not set. And that's because the battery was disconnected from the motherboard, which resets the BIOS settings to the factory defaults. So you may need to update your BIOS settings, or simply click continue to resume normal functionality. So the laptop has been running for about 20 minutes, and this is what we've got for idle temps, and this is under heavy load in the cool mode. Finally, let's switch to the ultra performance mode and see what happens. As you can see, the temperature on the CPU dropped to 98 degrees, compared to 107 degrees before the paste replacement. So overall, we got about a 10 degree improvement. So that's it, I hope it was helpful and thank you for watching.